The Lord of the Rings Online, or LOTRO, is an MMORPG released in 2007, and it remains, in my humble opinion, one of the best adaptations of Tolkien's world. In this video I will try to show you the hidden or not so hidden details that make the world of LOTRO so immersive and lively. This time we will take a look at Breland, the land surrounding and including the town of Bree. In the last video we left the hobbits at Buckland, where they entered the old forest. They did this to try to avoid the black riders which were hunting them on the road, and Merry had been in the forest before and he leads the hobbits through it. The first landmark they pass is called the Bonfire Glade, a place where the hobbits of Buckland once burned many trees as they were encroaching on the borders of Buckland. The glade is overgrown with short grass and several plants are described as growing there. These include hemlock, wood parsley, fireweed and thistles. To the hobbits this glade feels like a beautiful garden compared to the damp and dark of the forest. And the mentioned flowers can actually be found on this location as well. The forest gets more difficult to navigate as time goes on and eventually the hobbits get trapped by an evil old tree called the Old Man Willow. They are saved by a mysterious figure called Tom Bombadil, who turns out to be one of the most mighty and mysterious characters present in all of Tolkien's works. Tom finds the hobbits while looking for lilies for his wife Goldberry. When Tom has led the hobbits to his house, he puts the lilies he gathered into tubs that surround a chair that his wife Goldberry sits on, kind of like a throne. The old man Willow, Tom, Goldberry and their house are all present in the game, all the way down to the tubs of lilies at Goldberry's feet. Tom is known by many names, as Aragorn will tell you in the game, and he is mighty for sure. However, in Lotro he might not be the only powerful creature inside of the old forest. A long time ago, the forest of Fangorn, which surely reminds one of the old forest, was the very same forest as the old forest was. The wood was so large it ran from Eriador all the way to Kalanarthon, which would later become Rohan. Inside the old forest several white flowers can be found. And these flowers all have the names of Antwives, female ants. And you can get information by finding all of them and completing a deed, which is a sort of achievement inside Lotro. It also grants you premium currency. Whether these antwives lived in the forest when it got separated, or if these are indeed the antwives which were lost when their gardens in the brownlands were destroyed, is not clear. The high amount of activity in the old forest is explained in Lotro by the presence of the Witch King, who is searching for the hobbits. You can find an old haunted oak in the middle of the forest and he reveals he is loyal to the King of Angmar. The Witch King influenced the forest, but he influenced the following area that we will be talking about in a very similar way. After staying with Tom for two days, the hobbits traverse the Barrow Downs to make their way back to the Great East Road. This goes horribly wrong when the hobbits fall asleep while resting against a large stone spire. When they awake, they notice a thick fog has descended over the Barrow Downs, and eventually they are captured by a Barrow White, who was awakened by the Witch King. They are saved just in time by Tom Bombadil, and he gives the hobbits some daggers that he found in a barrow. The dagger that Merry carries will eventually help destroy the evil spirit that awoke the Barrow Whites in the first place, namely the Witch King, during the Battle of Pelennor Fields. The barrow the hobbits are caught in is often thought to be the barrow of the last prince of Cardolan, which was a part of the kingdom of Arnor, since Merry experiences dreams related to him while sleeping in the barrow. This barrow is actually mentioned in a quest in Lotro as lying somewhere between the dead spire, which was the stone that the hobbits were resting against, and the northern barrows. Unless this is referencing some of the non-enterable hills in the barrow downs, the only barrow this could be is Hout Menertil. However, this barrow has only one room containing some frog-like creatures called Kergrim. Moreover, in the books Frodo is described as running east before being captured. This would make the barrow of Ringdor or Taradan more likely, and since the barrow of Ringdor is largely flooded, the barrow of Taradan seems the best candidate.
While the hobbits are in the Barrow Downs, they see a dark line running beyond the hills, and they assume this to be the Great East Road that they are aiming for. After Tom leads them out of the Barrow Downs, they found out it was actually a line of bushes next to a dike with a steep wall next to it. This used to be the border of the Kingdom of Cardolan, and in a quest in the Barrow Downs there are actually quite a few references to the Great Plague that struck the region and killed many of the inhabitants of this kingdom, of which the Barrow Downs was the capital. While Frodo is making his way to Bree, several groups are searching for him at once. First are the Black Riders, who are seen in Archit, uh, the starting village for the human characters in Lotro, next to Bree. They mistake a hobbit called Mundo Sackville Baggins for Frodo, and they try to capture him in the introduction instance for humans. Next, of course, are the Rangers, who are looking for Frodo just as desperately. Just outside of Buckland, a ranger called Langlin is looking for Frodo near the Great East Road. Of course, he does not find him, because they took the road through the old forest. Aragorn actually sends the player characters to his allies all around the map, referring to Frodo as Mr. Underhill, just as the alias he got in the books. Eventually, Frodo and company reach the village of Bree, and they stay at an inn called the Prancing Pony. Here they meet Strider, and during the night they just manage to escape the attack of the Nazgul by staying in a different room while the Nazgul attack the special hobbit room the inn boasts. Later the player can find Gandalf here as well, who asks you to do what you can to stop the growing influence of Angmar in Eriador. Parliament Butterbur will remark that his beer has never been better after he told Gandalf that Strider left town with the hobbits in tow. This is a direct reference to the Fellowship of the Ring and the Return of the King, where Gandalf blesses Parliament's beer after hearing the news that the hobbits met up with Aragorn and left for the Lone Lands. It is confirmed in the Return of the King that the beer actually did improve. So eventually the hobbits leave Bree with Strider and they take the road through the Mitchwater marshes as a means of avoiding the Great Road. While going through the marshes, Sam remarks that the critters in the marshes make a very annoying sound. Nick, brick, brick, Nick. He starts calling them Nika Breakers, and that is what they called in Lotro as well. In fact, he's not the only one extremely annoyed by the Nika Breakers, as several quests in the game show. So here we leave the hobbits again as they now enter the land called the Lone Lands, which will be the subject of the next video, as it has some of my favorite details. Breland, however, is not yet finished. While the inn is attacked by the Black Riders, the Hobbit's ponies are either captured or they escape. And they need a new one before they can leave. Eventually they buy one from a man called Bill Fernie, who Mary heard earlier selling information on the Hobbits to the Nazgul. While the hobbits are away, Bree gets attacked by ruffians from the south, aided by Bill and a man called Harry Goatleaf, who was the watcher at the gate when the hobbits arrived. The attack takes place in the winter, and it can be fought in a skirmish instance in Lotro called the Defense of the Prancing Pony, where Bill and Harry are among the enemies. There is another questline in Bree about Bill's preparation for the assault, and here it is revealed he is working for the same Sharky that's active in the Shire, which of course is Saruman. In the last video I mentioned lots of ruins can be found in the Shire, and Breland is no different. Breland was also once part of the Kingdom of Arnor, and many ruins can be found, some apparently being maintained by the Dúnedain. A statue found in a ruin called Ostbaranor is made to the likeness of Aranarth, the first Dúnedain chief. Another instance is an obelisk, uh, which is a memorial and holds the names of all the deceased rangers. These and more are maintained by the Dunedain, and you can find them in the region. So thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I would like to thank everyone for all the positive feedback from the first video, and I hope this one met your expectations. I know the focus was not much on the village of Bree itself, because I am focusing mainly on the details from the books. 
Bree is the de facto capital of Lotro, and while I am sad we can no longer climb on the roofs of Bree since the update in 2012, uh, it did revamp the city into one of the prettiest towns in all of Lotro. So have fun with all the new content that just came out on the anniversary update, and well, let me know what you thought of the music at the beginning. I'm not very good at audio mixing and mastering, so I know it might have sounded a little bit harsh, uh, but it's fun to play around with it, and if anyone has any tips, uh, I would very much enjoy it. Enjoy the game, and I hope I'll see you all at the 15th anniversary festival.